Hi, my name is Blair Glenn. I do a lot of milling for my business. I've got a pretty nice piece of wood here. It's a, it's a redwood log. It's about, uh, oh gosh, it's about four, four and a half feet in diameter. Amazingly, this log is not that old. I counted the rings on this thing. It came from down here in the valley. It's not a, a mountain tree. It's a lowland tree. It's only got 37 rings on it. So this tree, as big as it is, and that's not even the butt. That came from about uh, six feet up. So it spread out quite a bit. It was bigger than six feet at the base. So anyway, what I wanted to talk about here today is, is when we mill these things up, there's, uh, there's some good wood in it, but it's not great wood. If you look closely at some of those knots that are on there, they're pretty good sized knots. Those things are going to show up in the lumber that you cut. So really, if I tried to cut two by fours or two by sixes or even two by eights, the thin pieces of wood, well, two inches, is going to show these great big knots all the way through and make it weak. So really, the only thing I can do with this is big timber. So I'll probably, uh, I'll probably cut, you know, six by sixes or maybe even uh, six by eights. Yeah, four by sixes maybe, but it's got to be big stuff. Something that'll encapsulate that great big knot. So let's go ahead and get started here and see what we can do. As you can see there, I did the first cut, or the first pass. And that's where I took off of it. I took some loose bark and I brought it down so I've got a level on there. And I'm into the white wood, but now i got to get down. I don't know if you can see it from the edge over there. i got to get down off the side there. Let me take the camera over there. Let's start by looking at the end here. This is uh, about four feet across. There's a little bit of heart rod in the middle there, and you can see that. That's pretty common in downhill redwood trees. But if you look up real close, the growth rings are pretty wide apart. I counted 37 of them from the center all the way to the end there. I'm using the Lucas mill. It cuts both on the horizontal and the vertical. So I cut one direction on the horizontal, and I flip it up, and it comes back, and cuts it off and that's that way you can end up with some squared up lumber. It's a pretty nice machine but it does have its limitations. Let's, let's start here by looking at the first cut. So you can see what I'm talking about when I say those big knots. They radiate out quite a ways and uh, you might get lucky and get a few decent boards but all the way along there's some pretty good sized knots and this isn't near as bad as a lot of them I've looked at. Some of them will have branches that are six to eight inches, and uh, boy, those, those show themselves all the way through the log. Now, another important thing you got to remember is that these logs, they taper. This one is exceptional. It's, uh, it's pretty consistent for a ways, but usually downhill, you'll have like 36 inches in one end and 28 or 26 on the other side. And the best you can get on something like that is the squared out section of the smallest end of the log. So when you're trying to figure out if you've got any value in a log, you, you got to look more than just the, what, how big it is at the base. Okay, so my next step is I'm going to lower the mill and take another pass. I'll probably go down, oh, about four inches. I don't want to go too far. I want to get into the, the red wood. And I'll cut um, across, and then I'll change it so that the depth of cut is deeper. I'm going to try and get uh, quarter sawn lumber to the best of my ability. Okay, second pass. We got here are some, we got some four by sixes, but there's a lot of bark in them. These over here, they could be use, useful, but not really. We've made two passes, and we're just now starting to get into the red portion of the wood. So let me go and do one more pass.
hard to tell there, but what happened is when you get to the end and you're cutting wide pieces, sometimes the tension in the wood will cause it to pull down. And I got part way through and the tension was pulling down and pulling down and it actually gripped the blade and it jammed up on me. What I should have done in a wide piece like this is make a bunch of incremental cuts you know, go in two inches or four inches and then, then finally six inches, but I was going about six and a half. And all that pressure, all that tension pulled down on it and just bound up the blade. So now I got to get that blade out of there. Okay, well I got that piece out of there. Let's go see what happened. Now there's the top of the log. And what happened is over here on the left, because I was cutting such wide planes, it was putting a lot of pressure down as I was cutting it just started pushing and pushing and it actually bent the blade. So as I'm coming in the pressure on the right there is pushing down pushing down and as it gets further down it's pushing the blade down and you can actually see down here where it actually was going down so far that it was cutting a different level. So that's where I had to back it off and when I got near the back here the pressure just pinched the blade. So what I had to do is I had to come all the way back and reset it and then cut two inches, then four inches, and then six inches. And what that did is that I uh, took it in little increments, allowing me to get it cut out of there so the pressure would be um, relaxed after every cut. But when I tried to do it in one big cut, it just, uh, it, it bit me. There's a little closer shot. See how, how much it was deflecting the blade? The bottom cut there, that was because it was bending it down and cutting it all the way down. And the whole thing was at a different level. And the top curve right here, top cut right here, is when I, uh, I balanced it out. Kind of messed up the whole surface though, didn't it? All the way down, all the pressures took that whole nice top flat. It was nice and flat all the way across until I get to that last part. So what I think I'll do is I'll just take a... Uh, I'll just take a little nibble cut next time and just try and re-level the whole surface so I don't end up with a with a messed up board. Those aren't too bad. These are the good ones here. Nice and straight all the way down. And these are the offshoots, the bark cuts. I've seen people be creative with these things. They can make a cool little outdoor bench or something. They're, they're pretty durable with all that redwood bark on there. They hold up pretty well.